Okay, uh, so we have Emilio Balbi here and uh, he's going to discuss about uh, what type of techno signatures. Emilio is from the University of Rome. Great. Yep. Yeah, so first of all, let me thank you for having me here. It's really a pleasure to be with you again after Houston. And uh, what type of techno signatures can we detect? That's what I want to talk about, but it's not a, a talk about our technical limitations or what, what uh, capabilities we have, but it's, uh, it's on a slightly different uh, aspect. And let me go straight to the point. There is this very obvious fact, of course, that if we want to detect a techno signature, uh, we can only detect it is if, if it is on our past light cone, meaning that uh, its signals, whatever they are, so um, doesn't matter, but they, they have to travel uh, at the speed of light, maximum speed, or less than that. Um, <clears throat> so this poses some constraints. It's a causal constraint. And, and, and it's very easy to see that there is this very straightforward formula that uh, if you want to be on the past light cone, uh, things have to be like that. And so you have, if you have a distance uh, R for the techno signature and, and you have this uh, time scale R over C, all the other time scales that appear in, 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 the, in the problem uh, have to uh, meet this causal constraint. So let me explain here. Ti is the time when the techno signature appears, and tau is the duration of the techno signature. Okay, so if unless this is satisfied, you cannot see that. Okay, this is again, it's a very obvious fact. Uh, there's nothing new here, but I think that there are some interesting impl implications that we can draw out of that. Uh, so let me show that thing again graphically. Again, it's very easy to see why, why this thing has to be uh, like that, because if you want to detect a uh, signal now that was emitted in the past from a, from a um, uh, location that is uh, at the distance R from us, then the, 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 uh, you, have to, uh, you have to be uh, located with, uh, within the, the, the interval between the first signal and the last signal. But, but then if this is not true, of course, you can have missed the techno signature because you received it, because it passed in our location in the past and, and now you, you've missed it. Or it can uh, be in our location in the future. And so this means that it's not yet detectable. Okay, so this is very simple, I guess. There is no, there's no problem uh, uh, agreeing with that. Where, where is the interesting implication here? Why, why I think it's interesting? It's interesting because R over C in general is a small quantity. What, what this means is that uh, if R is a location in our galaxy, uh, R over C is a small time scale. So the galaxy is, 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 is very small compared to the to the distance that light can travel in a time which is typical of the time scales of the duration of the of the of the age of the galaxy okay so this means and this again I, I, again i think it's not so obvious this means that the, this causal constraint acts as a filter on all the techno signatures that we can detect by selecting um, only uh, those techno signatures that have this very a very strict fine tuning between between two time scales which are otherwise uncorrelated. So the first time scale, again, is the, is the uh, time of appearance of the techno signature, which in principle can be anything between zero and 10 to the 10 years, the, 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 the age of the galaxy or the age of the oldest stars in the galaxy, okay? And the duration of the, of the, of the techno signature, which means not the duration, not the longevity of the civilization, but the duration, the, the persistence of the techno signature, the time, uh, over which the techno signature is is visible uh, remotely. Okay, so this this number tau is unknown, but a priori is not related to ta to ti. It doesn't matter when uh, when the techno signature appear uh, tau. It doesn't depend on, on on that time scale. Okay, but and this is interesting, I guess. If you want to detect the techno signature, then ti minus tau has to meet the causal requirement and it has, it has to, this difference has to be very small because it has to be less than say a thousand years or 10,000 years for galactic locations, okay? So you have these two numbers which in principle are, can be very different and can be, each, each one can be small or big or whatever, but, but they have to match very precisely if you want to 
detects something, okay? So uh, this means that uh, to answer the question what type of techno signatures we, we can detect, uh, a techno signature is only detectable if the lifespan of the techno signature matches almost exactly its appearance epoch, epoch, okay? And this is not something that is true statistically, okay? It's true regardless of the abundance of the probability distribution, even, even if you only have one, okay, uh, of them, um, you have to meet this causal constraint. Okay, so suppose that you have uh, some locations, some exocivilizations um, spread uniformly over the history of the galaxy. Okay, this is one assumption that you can make. That you can make. Then you should expect that uh, the vast majority of techno signatures have the time of appearance ti, which is of the order of a billion years or something like that. Okay, um, and therefore this means that if you if you use this filter. Uh, essentially, you are getting either very long duration techno signatures, which have Ti and Tau of the same or order of magnitude of, of, of order 10 to the nine years, or, and this is a different scenario, uh, you, you are only picking up the techno signatures that appeared later and very, very close to our, our own appearance. So they are coeval to us, okay? And they have these Ti, which is 10 to the third year, okay? So let me say again, the Ti is the time in the past when they appeared, okay? So it's positive and it's measured for, from today, which is T equals zero, okay? So just to um, fix the idea, suppose that, that we have three kinds of possible durations here, because I, I think really that the duration here is the, is the crucial parameter which we should look into. So uh, suppose that we have type A, type B, and type, and type C techno signatures, which have 10 to the third, a million year, and a billion year duration, okay? Uh, what, what we can see is that it will be uh, most likely that if we detect the civilization, it would be a type C techno signature. This, of course, does not mean that type C are the most likely to ex exist but simply that, that the filter that we are adopting here will pick up uh, uh, with, with, with a higher probability type C civilization, okay? Um, and it may seem that type A can be more common for some reason because the, the duration is smaller, but they are only detectable if they are very close in time to us, okay? And, and so either way, we are looking for, you know, something that probably is an outlier in, in, in any distribution we can think of. And, and here is where uh, statistics centers. Okay, so this formula here, you may recognize is a Drake equation. Basically, it's, it's written in a different way, but it, it, it's a Drake equation where you have N, which is the number of detectable techno signature. And then there is the, this gamma factor, which is an average rate of appearance. This is where usually in the Drake equation, you have all the factors. Uh, the probabilistic factors, and then you have an average duration, okay, which is the, the average of the number that we were discussing before, okay. So you see, it's very, it's very easy to show, at, at least in the uniform case, that if these um, techno signatures were spread in a volume around Earth, and say the volume is 10 to the third light year, um, and, and they appeared uniformly over, over T, then the number of civilization or the number of techno signatures that you have to have in order to have at least one techno signature in causal contact today has to be, in general, has to be big, okay? You, you, because the ratio between N and NT is equal to the ratio between the longevity and the, and the overall time scale of the galaxy. And this number we expect to be smaller than one usually. This is our naive expectation. Now, the problem is, is, is it really so? Uh, we don't know because we don't know tau, of course, but we can make some simulations. And here, it, where things can be a little bit more complicated because, for example, we can do something that it cannot be done easily in the usual Drake equation. So you can you introduce a, a, a gamma rate of appearance which varies in time. This means that you don't, ha you don't have the same probability for all the appearance epoch but you have some, for example, some higher probability of uh, that, that the techno signature appear around some, some epoch, for example, one billion years ago, okay? And, and, and then you have 
Uh, and then you can make simulations and see, uh, populate a sphere with, with random locations uh, where techno signatures are, and, and you can pick up only those that pass the filter. Okay, so in the first case, you see the first in the table, the first row of the table, you have a uniform assumption where you have uh, that, for example, if you want to, if you want to have at least one type A civilization in causal contact today, then you have, a, you have to have a total of 10 to the seven civilizations or techno signatures in the volume all over the history. Okay, and this thing gets a little bit better if you imagine that the distribution is not uniform, that you have laser appearing civilization closer to us, it, it does improve a little bit, but it doesn't improve that much, okay? And note that, that the, the number 10 to the seven or, or, or something like that is comparable to the number of stars in a volume of one, uh, one kilo light year around Earth, okay? So basically you're asking, you, you're saying that you have to have the, every, every location have to have a techno signature of that duration if you want to make at least one detection. But then if you look at the last column, you see that it's, even if you have only 10 or five uh, type C civilizations, then you have at least one in causal contact. So what, what this is telling us is that uh, it's better, and, and this is what we intuitively expect to have long duration civilization, but, but this is slightly different from what we usually uh, do with the Drake equation, where, where longevity means that uh, you have to have a high longevity in order to have you know, a, a lot of, of a, a large N, okay? Here, it, it, this is a slightly different take on the subject, okay? And also you can play around with different distributions, and what you see is that, again, if you have uh, uh, short longevities, changing the distribution of, of the appearance of the civilization changes the, 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 the fraction that you can detect. But when you have type C civilization with 10 to the nine years of duration, sorry, te um, uh, techno signature with one billion year duration, then it doesn't make much different, uh, difference how it is, uh, how they are spread over the history of the galaxy, okay? So let me, um, to wrap up, let me get to the final crucial point, which is longevity. I think that this is really the thing that we should uh, make some effort and, and, and focus on uh, to, to think what are the, the most promising techno signatures in terms of, of persistence. And we should not think just in terms of civilization longevity, but in terms of techno signature persistence. So you, you may have a civilization that uh, disappears after some time scale, but it leaves some artifact or some beacon or whatever that lasts for a long time. And that, and that is the most promising thing to detect. And then um, the longevity distribution, it's inter interesting in itself because you can do some modeling of that and you can take examples from organisms as opposed to technology and, and see that they are very different. And, th and this is something that actually I'm working right now and I, I, I have no result to show uh, unfortunately here, but, but it's something that I'm doing active, uh, active work right, right now. Because for example, it's very promising to look for distributions that are not thin-tailed, for example, not, uh, not as the normal distribution where you have um, the longevity which are spread as a Gaussian, okay, and, and where the most likely duration is also the average duration. But looking for fat-tailed distributions, for example, Pareto distribution or something like that, where you have uh, a very, um, uh, um, uh, you, you have a higher probability of having outliers, okay? So the average is perhaps some small numbers, but you have some, uh, some techno signatures which are much longer than the others. And, and those are the ones that you are probably um, detecting eventually, okay? Uh, there is this effect which is called the Limby effect in technology, in technology for example, where uh, the longer some technology has survived until now, the, the, the longer it will last, the much higher is the probability that it will, it will last in the future. And this gives rise to very fat-tailed distributions as opposed to Gaussian or whatever. Okay, so I think that there is some reason to be slightly optimistic here. First of all, because uniformity, which is what, what we usually um, where uh, what, what, what is the standard assumption when, when you think about typicality or mediocrity or whatever, uniformity is probably a wrong assumption because you have 
you may have the epoch of appearance that has a distribution which is picked around some, some particular time in the history of the galaxy. And we can model that using, for example, the exoplanetary uh, age distribution in the galaxy or whatever you, you may think of in terms of astrophysical processes, okay? And then also that you don't really need a large average duration. You don't have to have many techno signature with, with, a, with a large average duration. It's enough to have a very long lead techno signature or a few very long lead techno signature in order to succeed. So uh, things can be radically different, as I said, if the duration of techno signature, techno -signature uh, uh, is fat tail distributed, okay? And the best strategy, I think, is to look for type C techno signature, meaning long duration techno signature. And also another thing, which I didn't mention here, but I think it's important, if you enlarge the volume of search, what I've said before is not strictly true anymore, because then you can have, if you go extragalactic, for example, then you have, you can have um, uh, the constraint, the causal constraint become less stringent and, in, and you can have a, a much wider distribution of longevities which are detectable, okay? And the final point is that to, to do this, you really have to look into Monte Carlo simulations and do um, statistics and, 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 and don't rely too much on, you know, average processes or stationary processes, but you, you want to, to, to be a little bit more creative here. <laughs> uh, Thanks, this is what I wanted to say, thanks a lot.